Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 12th of February 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that I have chosen for today's discussion. See as I assured you today also there is an economic topic and it is very important for your prelims. Okay. Now without wasting much time let us get into our discussion. Look at this news article. See this news article reports about the Supreme Court's decision to examine a habeas corpus plea. You might be wondering why this is in news. This is because the habeas corpus plea was filed by children of a Pakistani national. See according to the article they claim that their father has been held indefinitely for the past 7 years and the Supreme Court has now decided to examine this habeas corpus petition. So in this background let us understand what is this habeas corpus as well as let us see what is writ and who provides the writ. As you all know the purpose of fundamental rights is to promote the idea of political democracy. They serve as checks on the executive's authoritarianism and the legislature's unjust laws. They are justiciable in nature which means that they can be enforced by the courts if they are violated. See for the restoration of his or her rights the offended person can go straight to the supreme court and they can issue orders or writs which include habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and cure warrant too. Here a writ means a formal or legal document that directs a person or entity to carry out or refrain from carrying out a particular action or activity. So what they are meaning is by this writ petition either you can say a person to do his work or you can restrain from doing the duty. Okay. So the Supreme Court under Article 32 and the High Courts under Article 226 can issue the writs of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and cure warrant. Okay. Now let me tell you few important facts which is very much useful for your prelims. Okay. See the territorial jurisdiction of the Supreme Court for the purpose of issuing writs are wider than that of a High Court. Why? Because Supreme Court can issue writs against a person or government throughout the territory of India. Also note that the Supreme Court cannot refuse any writ petition. See the Supreme Court is a guarantor or defender of the fundamental rights of the citizens. And it is clearly mentioned in article 32 that Supreme Court should provide the constitutional remedy. See this article 32 comes under part 3 of the Indian constitution which is nothing but a fundamental right. Am I right? So the Supreme Court cannot refuse a red petition. Also it has wider territorial jurisdiction. Okay. Now let us have a very brief discussion of each writs before seeing about habeas corpus in detail. Firstly take habeas corpus it means to have the body of it is filed to seek relief from the unlawful detention of herself or himself or of another person. See the court examines the cause and legality of detention. This writ is a guardian of individual liberty against arbitrary detention. See it can be issued against both public authorities and private individuals. Now secondly take mandamus. It means we command. It is a command issued by the court to a public official asking her to perform the official duties that she has refused or failed to perform. See it can be issued against any public body, corporation, inferior court, tribunal or government. But remember this writ cannot be issued against a private individual or private body and also it cannot be issued against the president of India or the state governors etc. Okay. Thirdly let us see about prohibition. See it means to forbid. It is issued by a high court to a lower court or tribunal in order to prevent the lower court or the tribunal from exceeding its jurisdiction or taking over a jurisdiction that it does not possess. 
So mandamus directs activity but prohibition directs inactivity. Okay. Next let us see about certiorari. It means to be certified or informed. See it is issued by a higher court to a lower court or tribunal. And it is issued either to transfer a case pending to a high court or to squash the order of the lower court or tribunal in a case. See it is issued on the grounds of excess of jurisdiction or lack of jurisdiction or error of law. So prohibition is only preventive but certiorari is both preventive as well as curative. Am I right? Yes. Now let us move on to the last word that is cure warrant. See it means by word authority or warrant. It is issued by the court to enquire into the legality of claim of a person to a public office. Hence it prevents illegal reception of public office by a person. So now we have seen all the writs in a very brief manner. Now we will specifically talk about habeas corpus. See it is a Latin term which literally means to have the body of. See it is an order issued by the court to a person who has been detained by another person. If this order is issued then the person must produce the body of the detained person before the court. After producing the person the court then examines the cause and legality of detention. If the detention is found to be illegal then the detained person would be set free. So in simple terms this writ is a bulwark of individual liberty against arbitrary detention. Okay. See so far we saw what is habeas corpus and who can issue it and we also saw against whom all it can be issued. Now we will see when all this writ cannot be issued. See habeas corpus is not issued in the following cases. Firstly when the detention is lawful. Secondly when the proceeding is for contempt of a legislature or a court. And thirdly if the detention is by a competent court. And lastly if the detention is outside the jurisdiction of the court. Now the question here is can a foreign national file habeas corpus writ petition in courts of India. Because in today's news article we saw that the children of a Pakistani national has filed a habeas corpus plea. Am I right? So let me clarify this doubt for you. See there are two types of fundamental rights. One exclusively to the citizens of India. For example you can say article 19 whereas few others are guaranteed to all persons irrespective of whether they are the citizen or foreigners or foreign nationals. For example you can say article 21. See if article 21 is guaranteed to a foreign national then definitely such a foreigner would be in a position to file a writ petition either in supreme court or high court for enforcement of his or her fundamental right. So here what actually matters is whether the right is guaranteed to the foreign national or not. If it is guaranteed to them then they can go for a remedy when it is violated. See for example if a person is detained under article 19 which is guaranteed only to the citizen of India and if the person is an Indian national he or she can directly approach the court under article 32. But if the person is a foreigner then they cannot claim the right under article 32 or article 226. So now I hope you can understand the difference. So if the right is conferred to both the Indian citizens and the foreign nationals then they both can claim for the constitutional remedy. But if the right is conferred only to the Indian citizens then only if it is violated for them they can go for a constitutional remedy. Okay. So that's all about this article. Now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion. Okay. Now look at these news articles. They talk about the recently held 4th Quad Ministerial meeting in Melbourne. See before getting into the news article just have a look at the question that I have displayed here. It is from UPSC mains in the year 2020. It is a question regarding Quad. I have displayed this question to show you how much important this topic is for UPSC means. 
also you can utilize the points that i am going to discuss for addressing this question okay now let's get into our discussion see in the fourth quad ministerial meeting the leaders resolved to speed up delivery of more than a billion covid-19 vaccines that is to be manufactured in india see they also decided to hold a special meet on climate change this year and as usual they decided to step up efforts to ensure maritime security in the region the region here being the indo pacific while mentioning about maritime security and the group's commitment to ensure a free and open indo pacific they also made a reference to china's action in the south and east china seas see the joint statement did not explicitly mention china but instead the statement mentioned that the quad countries will strive to protect the interest of their people that is freeing them from coercion in the indo pacific region This is the first time the quad countries talked about countries using the territory under their control to launch terror attack. See the joint statement after the meeting mentioned that the group condemned the cross border terrorist attacks in India including the 26 by 11 Mumbai and Pathan Court attacks. The statement also mentioned bringing the perpetrators of such attacks to justice. The statement of the Quad must be viewed in relation to the recent China Pakistan joint statement on Kashmir. See recently Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan visited China. Am I right? After that meeting with his Chinese counterpart Xi, they released a statement saying that unilateral actions by India are complicating the Kashmir issue. See Quad talking about cross border terrorism immediately after China Pakistan joint statement of Kashmir looks like India sending a strong message through Quad to Pakistan See these statements and commitments shows that there is a strong cooperation and cohesion among the Quad members but all was not well in the meeting there was also some disagreement mainly in the case of Myanmar and Ukraine issue In the case of Myanmar, while all the countries supported the sanctions and to stop arms trade, India took a different stance. See, our external affairs minister stated that India does not follow the policy of national sanctions. He said India's action with respect to Myanmar will be guided by cross-border concerns like insurgencies, COVID infections, and concerns of a humanitarian situation. the humanitarian situation could arise from food shortages okay similarly regarding the current ukraine issue while the us japan and australia were critical of the recent build up of russian troops along the ukraine border india took a different path see our external affairs minister explained that the quad meeting must focus on the indo pacific region Finally plans were also announced for the quad summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi US President Joe Biden Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida This was in Tokyo and it will be in the first half of 2022 See these are some important points from this news article Now in this context let us see basics about quad like its origin vision and mission Along with this we will discuss the importance of quad to India. First let us see the origin of quad. See quad is an informal strategic forum. As we know the members of quad include India, Japan, Australia and the United States of America. See all these countries are maritime democracies. The group met for the first time in 2007 on the sidelines of the ASEAN that is Association of Southeast Asian Nations. In 2007 there was no formal name given but the idea was mooted by Japanese president Shinzo Abe. See there was pressure from China and the Australian government to prevent it from joining Quad. Again in 2012 president Shinzo Abe gave impetus to the idea. He emphasized the idea of Asia's democratic security diamond comprising the US, Japan, India and Australia. Finally, in 2017 during the Asian summits in Manila, all four former members led by Abe 
Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the US President Donald Trump agreed to revive the quadrilateral alliance in order to safeguard the maritime commerce from the Indian Ocean to the Western Pacific. See, they aimed to ensure free and open trade that might be threatened due to the Chinese excess. So, this is how Quad came into being. Now, let's see the main objective of the Quad. See, the main objective of the Quad is to secure a rules-based global order. Then, it also ensures freedom of navigation. Then, it also has an objective for providing freedom of navigation and a liberal trading system. Although these are the main objectives of Quad, through the subsequent meetings, the objective of Quad has widened. See, the leaders now exchange views on contemporary global issues, critical and emerging technologies, connectivity and infrastructure, cyber security, maritime security, and even about humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and climate change. See, not only this, they also share their views about pandemic and education. So, Quad is evolving as it moves forward. Now, having seen the origin and the objectives of Quad, now let us see the importance of Quad for India. Firstly, it is useful for countering China. See, most Chinese trade happens through the Indian Ocean. These trade routes pass through checkpoints. If China joins hands with Pakistan and makes an aggressive poster along the Himalayas, India can work with the Quad and counter it in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. In 2020, with Australia joining the Malabar Excise, the alliance between the Quad members has only got stronger. Secondly, this Quad is useful for India in order to widen cooperation. See, in March 2021, US President Joe Biden hosted the first ever summit of the Quad leaders in a virtual format. After the summit, a joint statement was released titled The Spirit of Quad. The statement highlighted the widening scope of the Quad grouping. See, the statement reiterated its commitment to free and open Indo-Pacific. What does this free and open Indo-Pacific mean? See, it means that the members are committed to rule of law, freedom of navigation and overflight. Also, they are committed to peaceful resolution of disputes, democratic values and territorial integrity. It even mentioned the shared challenge of climate change. Even in today's news article, we saw that they decided to hold a special meeting for climate change. And they have decided? Yes, they have decided to have a special meeting for climate change in this year. See, India is aiming to achieve net zero emissions by 2070. Am I right? So, for this, a government is giving huge impetus to renewable energy and electric mobility. So, by working with the Quad members, India can get necessary finances and technology to achieve our climate goals. See, the spirit of Quad document also talked about cyberspace and security and critical technology. We know that India is rapidly digitizing. See, cyber security issues are the natural byproduct of this digitization. For this, India can work with Quad countries and learn industry best practices to ensure cyber security. Talking about critical technology, see here critical technology can be any current and emerging technology which has the capacity to significantly enhance our national interest. In the technology driven world, cooperation between countries in developing critical technologies is a need of the hour and India can benefit a lot by cooperating with Quad in this sphere. The document also mentions quality infrastructure investment. See, this is the area of huge importance with the rapidly changing climate. With the climate change, we must build strong, resilient and quality infrastructure. Although we are taking steps to mitigate climate change, building good infrastructure is a strong adaptation measure. See, if you look at the history of Quad, they have cooperated right from the time of 2004 tsunami, though in an informal manner. So, they already cooperated in disaster relief and rehabilitation. 
Now, after the spirit of Quad document, if they work together and build better infrastructure, countries will adapt to climate change. The document also mentions about enabling equitable vaccine access for the Indo-Pacific. India, with its strong pharmaceutical product capacity, can play a part in it. See, the Quad countries can help India develop technologies, while India can boost production and supply. so that the countries can be supplied with cheap and quality pharmaceutical products see many points that we discussed now can be used to address the question that i displayed during the very beginning of our discussion so we can understand that the widening scope of quad in recent times indicates that quad is moving away from its tag of military alliance See, first of all, none of the Quad countries accept Quad as a military agreement. It is just a Chinese propaganda that keeps tagging Quad as the Asian NATO. See, recently in July 2021, when the U.S. Secretary of State visited India, he said that Quad is not a military alliance. Rather, its purpose is to advance cooperation on regional challenges while reinforcing international rules and values. And India is also of the same view. and with the recent emergence of AUKUS quad should not be called a military alliance so to conclude as stated in the spirit of quad document the quad must keep expanding its role to realize its greater potential see it should establish an arc of democracy to maintain rule based non discriminatory order in the indo pacific region That's all about this article. So we discussed about Quad in a very detailed manner, and as I said, Quad is an important topic under mains. So utilize these points to enrich your mains answers. Okay. Now with these key points in mind, let's move on to the next article discussion. Have a look at this news article. See, this news article talks about the index of industrial production. See, before going into the crux of the news article, look at the question that I have displayed here. it is from 2012 upsc prelims okay it is about the index of industrial production that we are going to discuss today okay this topic is very much relevant in order to show you that i have displayed the prelims question okay now let's go into the article according to the official estimates for the index of industrial production that is iip india's industrial recovery slowed dramatically in december See the output is rising only 0.4% on a year on year basis and the manufacturing activity is falling at 0.1%. So in this context no we will look into IIP in a prelims perspective. See index of industrial production or IIP is one of the prime indicators of the economic development. It is nothing but a composite indicator. So this measures the short term changes in the volume of production. So this volume of production is for a basket of industrial products and it is done during a given period with respect to that in a chosen base period. See it indicates the relative change of physical production in the field of industries during a specified year as compared to a base year. Note each and every word that I said. Now let me explain you further. See there will be a chosen base period to compare this base period is nothing but a reference year and with this as reference we'll calculate the increase or decrease in the volume of production for the upcoming years currently the iip figures are calculated considering 2011 to 2012 as a base year okay then it is calculated for a short term period that is the index is computed for a month and released on a monthly basis then it actually measures the changes in the volume of production of a basket of industrial products in that one month okay so who computes and releases it see the iib is computed and published by the central statistical organization that is cso so to sum up this index gives the growth rates of different industry groups of the economy over a specified time period See the industry groups that it measures are classified as firstly on broad sectors namely mining manufacturing and electricity and secondly on the basis of use based sectors as 
basic goods capital goods and intermediate goods okay now in this iip the eight core industries of india represent nearly 40% of the weight of items okay so this is very much important so let us see what are all those eight core sectors or industries the first one is electricity second one steel next is refinery products fourth is crude oil fifth is coal sixth one is cement seven is natural gas and the last one is fertilizers okay so now what are all the uses of these iip data the iip is used by various government agencies such as the ministry of finance the reserve bank of india that is rbi then even private firms and analysts use these datas apart from this the data is also used to compile the gross value added that is gva of the manufacturing sector in the gross domestic product on a quarterly basis see that's all about this article so we have made a brief analysis of what is index of industrial production which is very much useful for our prelims perspective okay now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next article discussion now look at this news article this article is talking about the cyber threats see in this article the author is saying that the nations and institutions should prepare themselves for a rash of cyber strikes see he is saying that they should not wait for a big bang cyber attack see today we are not going to discuss about this article instead a detailed analysis of what is cyber threat and what are all the measures india has taken and what is the position of india to face the cyber threat is all covered in two of our hindu news analysis video one is on march 6 2021 and the other is on march 15 2021 the link for both the videos i'll give it for you in the description box kindly make use of it to know about what is a cyber threat and how far cyber security should be strengthened to face any kind of cyber threat see this is a very important topic for both prelims as well as mains so aspirants do watch both the videos and take a note of what are all the important points discussed in that video and it will be very useful for your preparation okay now let's move on to the next article discussion now look at this last news article See this news article mentions about one of the biggest tribal events in the state of Telangana. It is none other than the Samaka Saralama Jatara. See according to the article the state government is expecting over 1 crore pilgrims to the Samaka Saralama Jatara at Medaram. See this festival is also known as Medaram Jatara. and the medaram is a district in telangana so in this background let us briefly go through the festival and why it is celebrated and its cultural significance now let's start our discussion see it is a major tribal festival held every 2 years to honor the twin goddess who are samaka and saraka this will be held for 4 days it starts by arrival of the goddess to the gadilu in medaram and ends by their vana pravesham what is meant by that it is entry into the forest see this event commemorates the battle between a mother and daughter and the ruling kings over an unfair law who are the mother and daughter they are samaka and saralama see until 1955 about 2000 people used to visit medaram of which the majority that is 1500 belongings to the koya tribe but now a large number of non koya people that is approximately 1.3 crore visits medaram and the koya people comprises only 2% of the total worshippers and this fair is also believed to be the world's largest annual gatherings of the tribal communities see many tribal devotees from different states of india reached the festive place to celebrate the jatara and it is believed that after kumbha mela it is medaram jatara which attracts the largest number of devotees in the country see as a proof of this you can see that the estimated people who gathered in the year 2018 was 10 million 
and it is celebrated in Medaram at a time when it is believed that the goddess of the tribals visit them. See, the rituals related to the goddesses are entirely conducted by the Koya tribe priests in accordance with Koya customs and traditions. The most important ritual is that during the festival, people offer bangaram or gold of a quantity which is equal to the weight of the goddesses. See, they also take holy bath in the Jampanavago, which is a stream and it is a tributary of river Godavari. See, note that this festival has no Vedic or Brahmanic influence. And see, this news article is significant because very recently we saw about Kumbhamela, which comes under the intangible cultural heritage of humanity, which is listed under UNESCO. Since a lot of people gather for this festival, central government is likely to declare Medaram Samaka Saraka or Medaram Samaka Sarlama Jatara as a national festival. If that happens, the Jatara can be considered for intangible cultural heritage of humanity tag of UNESCO. That is why this article is important. So, with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the prelims practice question discussion. See, look at this first question. It is a two statement question. So, we have to read both the statements to arrive at the answer. Here, the first statement is correct because the constitutional remedy is a fundamental right under Article 32. The second statement is also correct because the High Court has a discretionary power to accept or reject the writ petition, whereas Supreme Court has to compulsorily accept the writ petition. See, now be careful. They are asking for incorrect statements and not correct statements. So, your answer here will be option C, both 1 and now look at the second question. It is from 2012 UPSC prelims that we saw during the discussion. So you can easily arrive at the answer if you had carefully followed the discussion. Here the answer will be option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only are among the 8 core industries. Whereas textiles is not under the 8 core industries. Okay. Now let's see another question based on the index of industrial productions discussion. See this is a two statement question. The first statement is incorrect. Why? Because IAP is a short term measure of the physical volume of production of the industries and it is not long term. Short term means it is on a monthly basis. Okay. So statement one is correct. Now look at the second statement. It is correct because IAP remains extremely relevant for the calculation of the quarterly and advanced GDP estimates as it helps to compile the gross value added of the manufacturing sector. See, this is also utilized by Ministry of Finance and RBI also. So, the question here demands for correct statement. Your answer will be option B, 2 only is the correct statement. Now, look at the last question. It is about the Samaka Sarlama Jatara. See, the question here is Samaka Sarlama Jatara, sometimes seen in the news, refers to Option A, Tribal Festival Option B, a program for promotion of breastfeeding Option C, Ancient Water Conservation Technology And Option D, UNESCO World Heritage Site See, we saw in our discussion that it is one of the major tribal festival So, Samaka Sarlama is a tribal festival Your answer will be Option A Displayed here are two mains practice questions. See, one is from 2020 PSC mains question. Please go through both the questions and write your answers and post it in the comment section. If you like this video, do like, share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to